Transylvanian Moonrise, a secret initiation in the mysterious land of the gods. Radu Sinemar and Peter Moon On the other hand, this physical universe is much smaller than the astral and mental universes which in turn are much smaller than the causal universe. Each of these has a practically infinite number of developmental possibilities regarding form and energy that is materialized into a specific type of matter and substance. For example, astral matter is much more subtle than so-called touchable physical matter which humans are used to. In turn, the substance specific to the mental plane is more subtle than the astral substance of emotions and the causal matter is much more refined than the mental one. We are thus talking about a minimal intuition that man needs and a common sense issue for him to be able to realize that this colossal unfolding of forces and energies within the creation is not just for his sake even if he thinks himself to be the only inhabitant of the infinite space surrounding him. What is common to all planes of existence, be it physical or subtle, is that they are structured with strict hierarchies depending upon one's degree of evolution and spiritual development. And, as the degree of evolution throughout the chain of transformations is directly proportional to the degree of knowledge, we reach the same problem we started with, namely, that the one who knows has power and this power gives him access to higher and higher dimensions of creation. Of course, I believe you already inferred that the power I'm referring to is not physical strength, financial power, or political power. All these are partial and very limited forms of the power the wise one achieves. So, everything is practically reduced to the evolution of consciousness, I concluded. During this process, ignorance is gradually overcome by knowledge and this is how you explain why some people can do more and better than others. The degree of development of one's consciousness attracts the development of the form, or in other worlds, of the material carcass that allows the further evolution of that individual consciousness, Ripa Sandi explained. The mineral, vegetable, animal worlds and finally the human one derive from one another in this order. But, it would take too long and involve numerous explanations to right now get into details of the way this passing is realized and its specific conditions as well as the particularities of every world. That's why I will limit myself to explaining just some aspects about man and animals as in their case the consciousness begins to take on more evolved forms. I was telling you that although there is a fundamental difference between the two worlds, Men often behave like animals and can even reach a lower stage than that. Being of the same opinion myself, I could not help but notice that the astounding fall of humankind is probably due to an acute form of ignorance. Nonetheless, how is it that man, who already possesses the spark of self-consciousness and knows he is an individual amongst others, manages to fall to a much inferior level? I asked. What kind of ignorance is that? Ripa Sundi seemed pleased that we had reached this point in our discussion. This truly is a more special issue, he answered. It is so because with the feeling of individuality that gives him a purpose in life, man at the same time also has by default the individual free will to act and his actions can, of course, be good or bad. Unlike him, an animal does not act out of free will. If there are moments when it seems like it does, these are just incipient aspects of individual will. All actions made by an animal are determined by instinct and habit, including his attitudes of attachment or devotion. Of course, with the passing of time, these ensure the animal's evolution towards the status of human being, but it must be pointed out that it doesn't have a will of its own because it doesn't have a consciousness of its own and doesn't know it exists as an individual. An animal can recognize many beings and objects around him and can even make certain simple connections or manifest emotions, but all these nonetheless come only out of instinct and habit. That is why we can't talk of an individual consciousness within members of the animal kingdom. Unlike man, animals have a group consciousness out of which periodically, and as a result of a cumuli of experience, one of the members of that species makes a leap to a superior evolutionary level. This superior level can even mean a more evolved species of animals or the status of a human being. In such cases, that member of the animal species is a fragment of the group consciousness, or better said, a quintessence of the evolutionary and experience level of that species at that precise time. Therefore, 
he is promoted in a superior stage of becoming. Gradually, it acquires the clearer and clearer awareness of its individuality until it reaches the stage of human being. Here, although the leap of consciousness to human status is huge compared to the previous existential conditions, the responsibility for the actions and doings committed belongs solely to the individual. As I told you, the animal acts out of instinct and even if his actions are sometimes ferocious, they are either done in self-defense or in order to feed. These are not considered individual actions as an animal doesn't have the awareness of the nature of his acts, its actions being integrated at the level of the group consciousness of the species it belongs to. In such a manner does the consciousness of the respective species gain experience. In the case of the human, it is completely different as all that he acts, speaks, and thinks is according to his own will, assuming that he is physically, mentally and psychically healthy. This free will is what gives him the possibility to consciously choose one option or the other and can determine whether he will go either on the path of evolution and good or on the one of perdition and suffering. Being human does not spare him the oppression of ignorance. If he chooses to do bad deeds, be violent, tough, stony, despotic or even kill, all these will count in his own destiny or karma and he will have to pay like for like in future lives. All the vices of humanity, starting with pettiness, hypocrisy, lies and progressing to destructive vanity, acerbic greed, chaining attachment, and poisonous jealousy are actions that darken a man's soul like cinder and black smoke. Unlike him, an animal will act strictly by virtue of preservation, feeding, and reproductive instinct. It is not capable of the unbelievable misery that some people are capable of inflicting or their abominable actions or distasteful subterfuges used to serve their selfish purposes. This is why I was telling you that, unfortunately, man will sometimes fall lower than an animal because even though he is capable of noticing, judging and understanding the evil nature of these actions, he still commits them. This is actually the essence of sin and mistake. Man will always end up where the threat of past actions takes him, no matter if he is aware of it or not. How is it possible for humanity to be in such ruin though? I asked, slightly confused. Is ignorance so dramatic? If you correctly understand the way these aspects are connected in the universe, all will be very clear. Ignorance determines erroneous actions and these, in turn, determine a cumulus of negative karma namely, a hard destiny. In turn, this enchains the respective human being with limitations imposed by the mistakes he's committed and the process continues like an apparent vicious circle. Coming out of such a lamentable condition can only be done gradually and with a constant and intense effort from the part of the respective being in an effort to transform and orient the nature of his actions towards virtuosity. He can sometimes feel so desperate and hopeless when facing life's problems and hardships that he can be tempted to take his own life thinking that maybe this way he'll escape from it all. This is a huge mistake and constitutes a severe blockage on the evolutionary path. I then remembered Eleanor's remarks pertaining to this subject. Ripa Sundi completed what I already knew. Those who resort to such a reckless act are usually psychically and mentally unstable people or those who manifest demonic influences in their personality. These aspects may not be noticed by the people around the suicidal person and can even seem unreasonable compared to his life up to that time. People's stupidity and ignorance, however, cannot be substituted for truth. I was amazed that the Lama seemed to know very well what I had talked about with Eleanor before his arrival. Nonetheless, I noticed that he was discreetly pointing only to those aspects of the conversation he considered important and that he wanted me to deepen my understanding of. His power of telepathic knowledge was formidable. Generally speaking, man lives in almost continuous drama of manifestations, he continued to speak. Without even suspecting the fact that there is a profound meaning of life in the universe and that there are certain fundamental and immutable laws that act in a perfect balance, the ignorant usually take the bad as good and the other way around. Left to his own devices, they are like a leaf carried by the wind or like a carriage without a driver to rein the scared horses. Often acting blindly, without thinking at all and under the impulse of his destiny, the ignorant man attracts many energies in his aura that will make him live his life in a larvae-like inferior state. 
Between this deplorable state and the one in which the human being is superior, there is a colossal difference which, paradoxically, is very rarely recognized by ordinary men. This is explained by the fact that the one who lives in a limited area of perception and knowledge does not have the capacity to easily understand what is superior to him as he has no comparison. Furthermore, he notices that many of his life principles are malefic and opposed to the universal harmony, and, together with his petty prejudices, are the complete opposite of the behavior and vision over life of a wise person. Confused, the ignorant then feels that, in order to transform, he needs to completely change his entire life vision which undoubtedly involves great effort, at least in the beginning. Often, he is not willing to undertake this effort. Moreover, he comes to consider that the principles and the profoundly spiritual way of life of the wise one are, in fact, mistaken and need to be stigmatized by society. The ignorant one, who then becomes malevolent, is supported in his intercession by the acceptance and opinion of the majority who are also blind. In fact, this kind of action expresses, in a subtle plane of existence, the raging fear of people. This applies in particular to the rich ones or those of the ruling elite who are afraid of losing their privileges, their influence and political power, and even their wealth. This way of action was and is aimed especially at great spiritual reformers of humankind and at those who share with others their innovative ideas about the freedom of the spirit, purity of life, honor and divine love. Being considered social threats, they are rapidly oppressed and the public opinion is directed and manipulated by means of false information so that it becomes a common front against the accused. As you already know, truth always wins, but this doesn't mean there's no suffering. Suffering appears every time there is a breach of the cosmic laws of harmony and balance, be it by actions done in the present time or by the agency of destiny reflecting the bad acts of the past and previous lives. You must know, however, that even suffering has a special meaning within the creation. Its main purpose is not to punish but to correct man's wrong attitudes regarding the life he is living. As much as he can see his mistake and learn from it, without repeating it later, the suffering disappears. If the man persists in his error and does not understand the hidden causes of his suffering, this will then amplify more and more and make his life a real nightmare. I was touched and felt cold shivers along my spine. Repa Sundi's explanation had stirred within me the exaltation of desire of not doing wrong but also the worry for the bad deeds I had done in other lives. I confessed my thoughts to him, but he laughed kindly, reassuring me. Lamentations for mistakes made in previous lives or the present one are pointless unless they allow you to lucidly observe their maleficent nature. To be honest, the term sufferance is only relative as the man receives only what he gave a long time ago. I also spoke with Eleanor about this aspect, I said. I was wondering though if things are really that rigorous. Ripa Sundi was very firm in his answer. The law of karma acts inexorably and it is extremely precise. Nevertheless, Divine grace often acts in a way so as to make man's many troubles and suffering throughout his life easier to cope with, especially when he sincerely regrets in his heart the mistakes he's done and understands that is not the way he needs to act. If it were not for this divine support, which is often called providence, it is probable that the human being would be wiped out by the burden of sufferance he needs to endure as a result of his bad deeds. But, as you also know, God does not want the destruction of the sinner, but his rehabilitation. This is exactly why I am telling you that the only way to return to and manifest a divinely integrated existence is by way of spiritual knowledge, supreme amongst the other kinds of knowledge. When a being knows on this level, he has at his disposal a way to tune in with all that is superior in the universe. Then, knowing its fundamental structures and laws, he can choose. Namely, he can use his free will in a positive direction. Unfortunately, as you very well know, there are many beings that choose the negative path and that is truly sad for their future karma. The one who is beneficially oriented can engage his own will more and more in order to attract elevated vibrations in his aura which will give him essential support in all the actions he carries on. Ripa Sundi stopped his explanations to ask me if I was tired. 
I told him that I rarely felt as good as I did then and thanked him for his care and attention. Although I aimed to deepen my spiritual knowledge during the last year, after Cesar left for the great expedition, I often felt the absence of a competent guide to explain the subtleties of some difficult aspects that I could not understand. My sporadic meditations did not always manage to pinpoint the hidden characteristics of some esoteric notions or concepts. This sometimes made me feel alone and helpless. Cesar had been so busy that I was only able to meet with him twice. That was when he shared some of the astounding mysteries of that event. So, I was extremely happy to find out as much information as possible regarding some subjects I had not managed to study thoroughly until that night. On the other hand, I was intrigued by the real purpose of this meeting. What was the actual reason why Ripa Sundi wanted to speak to me? Yes, I think the time has also come to discuss this aspect, he answered. It is already very late and there are still many things to do before we go. I do not know anything about any departure, I said cautiously, raising my eyebrows in surprise. It is very important that you trust us and what I am telling you now, he responded. It is not necessary to ask too many questions now. You will later be helped to understand everything from a perspective you are still far from even inferring. We will have to make a short journey, and we will leave three days from now. Eleanor will take care of everything that is needed. In the meantime, I will have some things to sort out so I am not going to see you until then. I insistently ask though that during these days you do not talk to anyone about what you are going to do or the fact that you met me. Besides, it is very unlikely anyone would believe you. I felt completely taken by surprise. I did not know where I was going, what I needed to take with me, or what would be the duration of our travel, but especially, I did not know the reason why I was invited on this trip. 